All right, so let's let's see how we would look at the SoftBank. So it's interesting, the SoftBank, their stock ticker is actually 9984. So in Japan, the stock tickers are, and you can see it's open right now, so it's actually trading as we speak. There's 5493 right now. Oh, 5495, we could have made 2 yen. Um, joking, of course, but SoftBank is uh, 5495 yen. So yen, as you guys may know, yen is about 100 more than a, a hundred yen to a dollar. So it's like 55, think of it as $55 uh, for a stock, which is pretty reasonable. So it's 5,000 yen. Yen is about 112 right now. So if you think about it, the stock's trading for $49 a share. So buying a hundred shares would cost you five grand roughly. Uh, buying a thousand shares is $49,000. Buying 10,000 shares is half a million. Buying 100,000 shares would cost you 5 million. Of course, you, when you buy it though, you don't buy it in dollars, you buy it in yen. So to buy 100 shares of SoftBank, you actually have to pay half a million yen. And if you're like me, and you, you know that's not a lot of money to you, and maybe you need 100,000 shares, you're actually buying half, uh, 500 million yen worth of the stock. 500 million yen. So that's a lot, that's sort of a lot of money if you think about it, to have in one stock, 500 million yen. But um, that's, uh, that's, you know, if you divide by 112, it's only, it's only $5 million. So anyway, that's sort of the thing. You buy and sell in yen. You buy and sell in yen when you do that. And so I'm actually going to save this file. What I like to do is I save it as the ticker. So I'm just going to save it as 9984, the same way I would save it as AAPL. I know that 9984 is... is um, I know that that's, uh, that's SoftBank, and I've memorized that forever now. 9984 is SoftBank, the same way I know that 4502 is Takeda, 4503 is Estellas, et cetera, et cetera. I know that 9984 is, is SoftBank, and I'll always remember 9984. So if you go to Yahoo Japan, you guys may not have Bloomberg, but if you go to Yahoo Finance Japan, it's actually really good. And I used to go to this every night every night and it looks looks hard to read if you don't know Japanese and kanji characters and romanji characters and things like that but you can actually just type in 9984 <laughs> and there it is there's your there's your stock quote so um, you know uh, definitely definitely easy to look up stock quotes in Japan and you can also use Bloomberg's website so right now it's it's 54.95 so anyway um, let's take a look at the way Japanese do their um, do their financial statements, and for Japanese stocks, there's there's no good uh, website to go to. I just go to the company's website. I just go to um, SoftBank's website. I Google SoftBank Investor Relations, and you gotta kind of have to futz around the internet to see to see if you can find it. But eventually, you'll find it, and you'll you'll get a sense for what it looks like. And it looks this looks like it would be it. And this is it. They all look like this. Uh, and you can see that they're in IFRS, which is the foreign equivalent to GAAP. So instead of uh, GAAP in, is the US accounting standard, IFRS is international accounting standard. So keep that in mind. So there's a few things to learn like that, but this is actually what Japanese 10Qs and 10Ks kind of look like. They're numbered, one, financial highlights, two, financial position, three, forecasts. And here they have this really convenient shares outstanding thing. So we, we can see that they have a billion shares outstanding. Uh, 1.182405, 1.182405 shares outstanding. And that was in Q415, Q415. So we can immediately calculate the market cap. The market cap is an astounding six trillion yen. So six trillion, 6.5 trillion yen, which is $65 billion. And if you're from Japan, you gotta just get used to dividing by about 100. In this case, it's 112, but you know, in, your, in your mind, if you're gonna do a quick shortcut, just take off two zeros and you can see 
6.5 trillion becomes about 65 billion. Of course, the yen is not at 100 yen to a dollar exactly. It's about 112, so it's actually 58 billion. So that makes it a pretty big company. It makes it a pretty important company for tech. You can't just ignore SoftBank. And if you're an American hedge fund, I can tell you a lot of these American tech investors will basically ignore it because they just don't want to. They just don't want to be bothered with a, a foreign company, and I think that's kind of silly. So let's see, SoftBank. 9984. It's just as big. It's just as big. It's bigger than Netflix. It's just as big as Priceline. It's not quite as big as the big kind of six companies we've looked at. Tech's biggest six companies. Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, Tencent, and Alibaba. At least internet and software. So it's not a giant, but it's pretty big. I mean, it's bigger than Yahoo. It's bigger than Netflix, eBay, etc. Obviously, we're not looking at semiconductors and, and uh, you know everything else and there's plenty of a couple of other big companies like Oracle and Cisco and and IBM and Intel and Apple and TSM um, and Qualcomm but SoftBank is still a huge tech company by any any metric all right so let me get rid of some of my non finance stuff here okay so then uh, they go to the income statement and the um, balance sheet like any other um, SEC filing, um, or at least they should. Let's see, sometimes, uh, for, I know for the pharma ones, they usually keep it up front. So let's see how SoftBank does it. Looks like they have a lot more disclosures. But eventually you'll see a balance sheet than an income statement. It's a big, uh, big filing. Oh, the other really important thing to know, you'll see here in a second, is that the fiscal year in Japan always ends in March. This is pretty important. You learn this thing over time. And remember, Japan's the second biggest, basically, economy in the world. So learning Japan uh, makes a lot of sense after the US. So Japan, fiscal year, always ends on March 31st. And don't ask me why, I'm not totally sure. So fiscal year, 2015 ends on 331 2016 and that could be a little confusing that can be a little confusing but that's how uh, Japan works so you got to learn these little tools of the trade but other than, you know it's pretty easy other than that so check out how much cash this company has three billion three three trillion yen 3.2 trillion yen and that's not uncommon in Japan there's a, it's actually a custom uh, to hold extra cash in Japan. And the reason, I think, is that in the 80s, Japan had quite the, the crisis. Let's see if there's a good book on that. I'd like to read a good book on that. Let's see if I can find one. Japan crisis. Ramen? Here we go. Japan's financial crisis. Institutional uh, rigidity and reluctant change. Japanese, Japan's policy trap. Dollars, deflation, and the crisis of Japanese finance. That looks okay. Maybe I'll just get all of them. We need ja Jap Japan financial. Uh, sometimes people call it the lost decade. Well, let's see if we can find a book on that. I'll just I'll just get this one. They call it the lost decade because they uh, basically didn't grow their GDP I think for a decade, and one of the reasons is they had a credit crisis. Um, if that sounds familiar, um, and now they're so conservative that companies like SoftBank you can see half the half the company is cash, which is a little crazy. Let's see property, plant, equipment, goodwill. Investments accounted for using the equity method. So if you add that, that's another trillion yen. So it's the four and a half trillion of the six and a half trillion dollar company is cash or financial investments. Even more, 662, 462. Now they may have a lot of debt, so we've got to hold on there. But if you add these two, these financial assets, and then these financial assets, you basically have the whole company as a bunch of cash. 
Now here's death, so thank thankfully, ah, there's plenty of death. That's that's good to know. So I guess SoftBank is actually leveraged. Most of the Japanese companies you'll see have no leverage. So they have five billion and five trillion in cash, but they have eleven trillion in debt. So it's actually even bigger. Enterprise value wise, it's a thirteen trillion dollar company, which makes it about a hundred trillion, a hundred billion US dollars in um, in enterprise value, which does make it a hundred billion dollar company, which is a really rare entity. So we actually have to take these two and divide by the n, and we can see that the market cap is 118, um, 118 billion. And you can see that the net cash is very negative. Most tech companies, especially Google and Microsoft, but in fact all of these tech companies, you can see they've accumulated a lot of cash, whereas SoftBank has decided that they have an enormous, that it would be good for their company to have an enormous amount of debt. And that's not um, unusual. Um, when we look more into SoftBank's business, you might see why they've decided to do that. But SoftBank has an enormous amount of debt. And one of the best things about Bloomberg is you can actually look up debt. Debt is very easy to analyze on Bloomberg. So here they have a trillion dollars of bonds. This is their biggest bond, it's 450 uh, billion. Uh, 450 billion dollar bond and it's yielding 2.3%. Um, so this is, uh, we sometimes call these the 22s. I'll teach you a little bit about that. Um, I'll put it over here somewhere. This is the two, let's just put down the maturity, 2-9-2022. The coupon is 2.5%. And the current yield to maturity is uh, 2.379. So the debt of SoftBank is definitely um, trades very safely. This is debt that matures in six years. And if you look at uh, JGBs or the Japanese government bond, JGB, the JGB is, is probably yielding about zero for a six year maturity. So that sort of uh, gives you a picture of SoftBank has a lot of debt, but they're not, uh, you know, the markets don't think that that debt is risky necessarily. So let's take a look. Uh, this is a, a $400 billion piece of debt. Sometimes we call them pieces. Uh, and it's the 1.26 coupon. And it's yielding 1.27. So it's basically no risk of default. It's also the shorter duration maturity, so it's closer to, to uh, maturity. Let's look at uh, another piece of their debt. And this is harder to look up uh, without Bloomberg. I will say this is the one nice piece about Bloomberg. All right, so SoftBank, 6% bonds. These are in US dollars. We should stipulate what currency they're in because that will matter a lot due to the inflation of the currency. Here, these are the 2025 bonds. So 730, 2025, 6% coupon, and these bad boys are yielding 5.685%. And these are traded in dollars. And these are 10-year bonds. So these are significantly more risky. This actually could be a good investment, in fact. We'll have to look at the uh, at SoftBank, but you know the nice thing about debt is you can decide whether the debt is the better investment or the equity. And a six a six percent return is pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, the U.S. Um, ten-year bond, which is about equivalent in duration, right? It's 2016. Ten years from now would be March 2026. This bond matures in July 2025. So the duration, which is very important in bonds, and we'll tell you why some other time, is about the same as a 10-year bond, and 10-year bond is yielding 1.81%. Uh, sovereign, I think that's how you spell sovereign. Um, so you can see above the sovereigns, you're getting all this extra yield, about 4% about extra. And it also gives you a hint at the discount rate the discount rate's got to be something like 7% since the 
the far date bond is 6%, so the discount rate should be like 7%. Anyway, that's sort of a picture of SoftBank. Let's, um, let's take a look at the business itself. And just like any other business, you're gonna have revenue, cost of goods sold, gross profit, all that stuff. You're gonna have all your normal quarters. The only difference is your, your quarters will be slightly different due to the calendarization in Japan where your um, fiscal year ends in March. So you're going to have it sort of look like this. Uh, instead of the first quarter and starts on April 1st and actually ends in June. So the fiscal years for Japan are all ending as we speak. So in any event, let's, let's sort of, um, let's sort of, set this up and we I put this on the top so it doesn't confuse me if there's any other um, if it's a calendar normal calendar quarter I just put down uh, the quarter names but if there's um, if there's a different calendar uh, corresponding like Q114 normally that means to me the quarter that ends on March 31st 2014 but because this is Japan it's actually the quarter that ends on uh, three months later, it, it ends on June 30th, 2014. So I put that down there so I can kind of keep track if it's a different style of a company. All right, so here's SoftBank's uh, nine month ended. I wonder if they give us a three month ended. Here it is. Three month ended for December 31st, 2014. So I can just go here, December 31st, 2014, or December 31st, 2015, which is the one that we're more interested in. And you can see they did $2 trillion of revenue the cost uh, roughly a trillion and a half. So the gross profit was 884 billion yen. Uh, SG&A, and you can see here that they don't break out R&D or anything like that. They just write, basically here's our operating <laughs> expenses. Here's our operating expenses. So you're not gonna get sales and marketing or R&D. And there's some Japanese companies that give you that detail. These guys don't, it's their call. So it's gonna be a little harder to analyze the business. But you can see they're a profitable company, which is one of the first questions I've had. All that debt basically wipes out their profit, as you can see. Um, so they're, they have EBITDA, but if you look at their actual um, net income, it's close to zero because the finance costs are so high. So their net income was only two million yen which is like $20,000, uh, or is that 2 billion yen? I don't know, let's see, 2,400, yeah, it's 2 billion yen. That's only $20 million, which is not a lot for a $100 billion company. But we'll see shortly. EBITDAD, <laughs> that's hilarious. I'd love to be an EBITDAD. First I need a EBA babe, EBA, EBITDA babe. All right, so again, we can just do the quarter before. Super easy, same way that we would do a US company. And you can see it's not that scary. You know, why, why be so scared of these international companies? It's not that bad. Come on now, don't be a xenophobe. Just Japan. Plus, you get to eat all the great Japanese food when you go visit your the companies you've invested in. And it's just as tedious as American companies. You got to go fill out a bunch of quarters, and the cash flow statements and all that all exist here too. You can see here cash flow. Uh, from operations was a lot better than the income statement makes it look. But they don't give three month cash flow statements. So keep that in mind. But if you look at cash flow from operations and you subtract it from um, from uh, CapEx, they're actually free cash flow negative in both nine month periods. So somehow, somehow SoftBank is a $100 billion company that loses money. I have to sort of see why. I think it has something to do with their ownership of Alibaba. I think it has something to do with their ownership of Alibaba.
So now we've got the basics down. It's a $100 billion company, but what, what is this company? What is this revenue? What do they own? It looks like they have a bunch of, oh, and here you can see a little bit of the debt. What's actually in their portfolio? That's definitely the one thing missing from these SE, from the Japanese filings, the financial reports. They don't really have, um, um, they don't really have any uh, commentary, or at least too much. So it's something to, to keep in mind. So I guess they own Sprint. Yahoo Japan. And Alibaba. Now Alibaba is a $150 billion company. So I wanna know how much they own of each. a lot of cool properties here. I think SoftBank owns Sprint, yeah. Looks like they bought Sprint. Sprint Nextel. Looks like they own 72% of Sprint, and then there's this Sprint trading stub, basically. Eighty-three, seventy-two to eighty-three percent of Sprint. Acquisition of Sprint was supposed to help Masayoshi San realize his vision of transforming SoftBank into the world's most valuable company. Instead, this becomes the biggest setback. Masayoshi San. San. Sprint deal has proven a dramatic blow, one of Japan's most enigmatic entrepreneurs. Looks pretty cool to me. I like the no tie. Who said he has a plan? Who said he has a 300 year plan? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> to build an internet empire unrivaled in profit, cash flow, and market value. Instead, as Sprint losses mounted, Sun found himself spending hours a night on the phone with its engineers and executives. The prospects of a turnaround may be slipping away, taking away precious time from the 58-year-old as he tries to secure his legacy. He was very overconfident from SoftBank success in Japan. With Sprint, it seems like Sun's luck with these big splashy, ac splashy acquisitions has run out. SoftBank paid $22 billion for a controlling stake in the number three, uh, in the number three US wireless operator. That investment has lost $7 billion, and Sprint is now number four. So I guess the competition is what, uh, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. Those are the three comp competitors, basically.
Sun reminisced about his first trip to the U.S. as a 16-year-old. Experience inspired him to create SoftBank, which he has since transformed to a distributor from a distributor PC software to one of Japan's largest acquirers, more than a thousand investments. This is like a roll-up. This could be the valiant of, of Japan. Although he did do the Alibaba investment. I remember these guys from a long time ago. Was, I traded the stock in, in 2005. Anyway, he then tried to acquire T-Mobile to, comp to combine with Sprint, but regulators blocked him, scuttling his plans to achieve profitability in the U.S. market. The scenario has gone completely awry. It's becoming clear to investors just how high the hurdle is now. Six bonds coming due. It's eight billion. You could always roll those bonds, I guess. Sprint booked its fifth consecutive quarter of losses. SoftBank's biggest holding is Alibaba. So this is an interesting company. It's kind of a portfolio. It's a company that owns a lot of assets. You have to value them separately. Those kinds of companies tend to be traded at a discount. Berkshire Hathaway is a sort of a similar company. We sometimes call them conglomerates. Conglomerate. So their Alibaba stake is probably their most valuable asset, is my guess. Let's see if they can. This looks like they have Y Mobile, SoftBank, Mobile, things like that. They have Sprint, Yahoo Japan. Now, their biggest asset by far is just the, the fact that they own, they own some Alibaba stock a long time ago, basically. Sprint, and, uh, Sprint doesn't look very valuable. I mean, this is a $100 billion company, right? There's got to be something in here. I mean, it's certainly not their income statement. They lose money. And something that loses money shouldn't be worth a hundred billion dollars. So there has to be something that they own that is uh, more valuable than uh, that. Otherwise, it could be a great short. And that's like I said. Sometimes in Japan, you have these very overvalued companies that stay overvalued. I know some of my friends are friends with the SoftBank people, so I shouldn't talk too much smack. <laughs> Shh. I don't need anyone saying, Martin Shkreli said to short SoftBank. Shorting is a tricky business. They, uh, people get angry when you short their stock. Like, it, like you insulted them on the deepest level. You know, the stock market goes up and down. It doesn't mean it's a bad, bad company. It could be a great company, just a too expensive stock, you know?
Okay. Let's see if we can find anything on Alibaba. You know, one of the ways we can figure out how much they own of Alibaba is we can actually go to Alibaba's documents, which kind of makes sense, right? Let's go to sec.gov. We can quickly glance at Bloomberg to see BABA holders list. Well, this doesn't have SoftBank listed on there, but let's see if the or we can look at the ordinary shares, which don't trade, but you can see that SoftBank owns 32% of uh, approximately of it looks like of Alibaba and Yahoo owns 15% and so if you add that up 32% of Alibaba is worth it's 179 billion so that's 57 billion right there Sprint is basically worthless. <laughs> Sprint is worth 13 billion. Yahoo Japan, let's see what Yahoo Japan is trading for 23 billion. But I don't know how much they own of Yahoo Japan. 4689, 4689. 43%. So basically, SoftBank owns 80% of Sprint, 32% of Alibaba, and 43% of Yahoo Japan. That's basically all that SoftBank is, as far as I can tell, is um, is these three assets. So if you add that up, that's about 80 billion U.S. dollars. The stock trades for 115 billion. So that's about 30% too expensive. Having said that, like I said, I haven't done the math too closely or carefully yet, but um, could be more or less, these numbers could be more or less than we're thinking, but. Uh,